I hope you don't mind the crickets in the background. Okay, so this video is really interesting. And why do I say that? It is because um, I am actually using or I've used Codex here from OpenAI to actually write a cybersecurity, a tool that actually helps cybersecurity professionals. And here is exactly, and I'm gonna explain. So a uh, Codex, the AI model from OpenAI, which is trained on 180 gigs or 160 gigs of code from GitHub. Um, Codex actually wrote the entire script it had a few things wrong, which is why I, I'm going to show you the corrections that I made so that uh, the code built, so Codex actually built this with a few minor corrections on my behalf. Now, let's start. This is actually the, um, the instructions that I gave. So the following is a script in Streamlit. Now, for those of you who don't know or who do not uh, develop or are not using Python, Streamlit is actually a very, I would uh, dare to call it simplistic, but extremely useful and very fast um, web application framework, web application library or um, Python library that's oriented to web application development. So that's why I prompted Codex to actually use Streamlit to build this application. Uh, and I told, uh, so the following is a script that uh, in Streamlit that uses binary edge and security trails APIs for subdomain enumeration. It takes input a domain name. And that's the only thing that I gave the model. And then the model actually wrote this entire piece of code. Now, for some reason it wanted to save the domains to a csv which is interesting i don't know why it did that but anyways a few uh, things on the model and i do have to say that the there's going to be a link to the script in the description so that you can run it now uh, why i said that uh, why i asked codex to write this in streamlit because when you write this in streamlit you just simply use streamlit run and the name of the script and this actually you don't have to do anything uh, and it's actually gonna start a web server on your local host on uh, this port and it's gonna display the web application the web application here now uh, what uh, codex generated here and the corrections that I made so first off uh, all the way up until let's see all the way I believe what what exactly did it get wrong let me see first off uh, we're gonna start with this um, this is a tweak not a not necessarily a correction so sidebar text insert your your binary edge API key which is over here this was a text and the API key was visible in plain text so I made the type of this input as you can see here I made the type as being password then uh, the first real co uh, correction that I made to the and uh, as we can see so here's what it does it writes a few things for the user interface we have the domain name so it gets a text input domain name here and there's of course there's a room for um, maybe injection here I believe and then it writes uh, two functions so get subdomains from binary edge pretty explicative and get subdomains from security trail and uh, it passes so th this this AI model actually writes this entire thing I'm still fascinated by it 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 takes input the domain and API key be binary edge st security trails so very inventive on its on its behalf so it decided that it wanted to call API key st and API key be now for the API key from security trails it actually uh, creates the URL and um, in this case it's interesting because I believe this this type of notation 
of string formatting this is from starting from Python 3.9 if I'm uh, correct uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong so it uh, it writes the URL then we have our input here format domain it takes the domain from here and then it passes a header API key which is over here the first one is from uh, yeah so from binary edge and then it returns so if rest status code is not 200 binary edge returns status code and it gives us the status code it doesn't give us the entire error else it returns res.json so response.json it it returns the response in a json then it does this it tries to do the same thing for the um security trails now let me actually see if i modified anything here api key so in this case it calls it api key and it knows that binary edge calls it x key x key and api key okay so so far so good now it writes the main function so in the main function it actually it's interesting because it kind of makes it look like slightly professional as it says time sleep and after it sleeps for one second it actually tries and here's what I actually started to modify so we have subdomains it, it uh, creates a variable subdomain binary edge get subdomains from binary edge we have the two parameters domain and API key so far so good domain and API key then it does the same thing from for security trails then it writes so it runs this and actually in this variable in both of these variables right now we have a JSON here what it does next it actually writes to the console and you're actually gonna see this when when I run the script um, binary edge returned here is the number of subdomains because it says length subdomains binary edge and it knows that binary edge saved the subdomains inside the JSON in a key called events so length subdomain binary edge events the length of this uh, key is actually the number of subdomains that return binary edge now when it comes to security trails here what it does returns it tries to do the same th thing so subdomains length subdomain security trails and here is what it got it slightly wrong because in this case subdomain security trails is a json with four um i believe four bigger keys and for the third key which is called subdomains that's where it hosts the subdomains in that uh, part of the json file so what i actually modify here let's see um what i did here actually because we get uh, we get um subdomain security trail subdomain so what i did here i created a new list and for each subdomain in subdomain security trail subdomains which is where all the subdomains are and if you're familiar with uh, if you're familiar let me actually open up a notepad if you're familiar with uh the security trails let's see the response here the events so this is going to be the fourth key the events not the events but the uh security trail subdomains so the subdomains key if you call the security trails api it's going to have the subdomains but it's going to have it in a different format like for example let's say we have a twitter we have the domain name twitter and for twitter we have uh let's say api.twitter.com we have uh dev.twitter.com we have 
backup for example dot twitter dot com so it doesn't actually return api dot twitter dot com but it only returns the api the dev the backup and here's the the thing what i wanted to do so i said that for each subdomain in subdomain security trail subdomain what you should do is to add uh, the following so the name the subdomain is actually going to be replaced by the subdomain so the api is going to be replaced by the api plus dot plus domain and the domain of course is in this variable over here so in the case of twitter we have api plus dot plus twitter.com and that's what it does for each of them and it writes this into a new and it appends each one of them to the uh, the security trails um, list next I didn't modify anything but next here uh, returned uh, next what it does it says subdomain binary edge events plus subdomain security trails what I did here so in this case it actually uh, tries to uh, put up a larger list with all of the subdomains so what I did here I said list set subdomains binary edge events I'm doing the list thing first off we're doing the set thing because the subdomain binary edge events I don't know maybe it might contain duplicates that's that's why I'm converting it into a set so when you convert a, a Python list into a set the set only takes the unique uh, elements and maybe I'm not really sure if it sorts them and then I'm actually making a list out of them again so probably not the most efficient computing but anyways uh, and then I'm doing the same thing for the sec trails uh, list here so set and then a new list anyways and then uh, what I'm doing I mean what it does I haven't changed these uh, something uh, it got it wrong here so time sleep and then here's a little redundancy so I actually commented this out and in this case it says subdomain list set subdomains so I didn't comment out this one but I should have because in my case here the subdomains is already a list so this is a bit redundant but anyways it doesn't actually decrease the speed too much and then what it does it also it uh, creates a data frame of the subdomains it writes the data frame to csv so it actually saves it to an icsv uh, and then it writes the data frame to the console which is really nice you're gonna see and all this is in a try except formulation so it actually tries this and if it runs correctly it's gonna run if there is uh, some error it's gonna catch it um, as e and it's gonna write what the error is now if name equals equals main which is very uh, Pythonistic we run the main program so not much change here now the big takeaway codex wrote this entire thing I only tweaked it um, I am I don't know I'm still very overwhelmed I keep saying this by the implications of that of actually having such a tool now this type of tool um, in this case of course I could simply what I'm actually gonna do in the future is create more functions for different so these two um, these two services require API key and uh, the API keys are free I think um, binary edge offers uh, 250 or so or maybe 500 uh, queries free queries per month while security trail gives you about uh, 50 which is why I'm pretty conservative with mine because I've already ran 
I believe half of them only trying to make this uh, actually or only trying to test them. Uh, I think I'm going to add or I'm going to let Codex uh, add more of these um, uh, create more functions that would actually look into cert.sh census and maybe other uh, services web services that are good for subdomain enumeration because this uh, as a matter of fact this is a really nice looking tool in this case so you don't have to you have a web based uh, subdomain enumeration tool similar to I could add a lot of tools to make it very similar to subfinder and I could maybe probably increase its speed but in this case the speed is not a matter of um, of writing efficient code because uh, it, it the request it involves doing requests uh, to APIs so I don't think you can vastly improve that aspect what I want to say here is that I'm actually going to post uh, this on my github so it's gonna be in the description of this video feel free to uh, take it I'm gonna credit codex for actually writing it um, and that's that this is this my biggest my only major contribution was to provide this the following is a script in streamlit I've only told it what I want so is your job as a cybersecurity professional at peril with uh, this sort of technology I don't know do you still have to learn code uh, in today's world when you have like tools like this that actually write code maybe you do uh, wanna learn how to code because in this case as you've seen um, it didn't got it didn't get it right uh, from the very first uh, so it needed a little bit of debugging but if I would have run this multiple times I might have gotten a different output and if I would tweak the temperature I might also get different outputs and maybe one of those outputs would be even better than the one that I'm that I've been doing here maybe it would have uh, created the entire um, the entire interface I don't know differently but anyways um, I'm going to post this in the description of, z of this uh, blah 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 uh, <laughs> of this video so let's actually see it in action let's say twitter.com and then submit this is waiting I think it's also waiting binary edge return 100 subdomain security trail returns 1158 subdomains merging results we have uh, 1258 subdomains saving them they save them to subdomain CSV and then there we have them all this all of the subdomains here displayed maybe there's a nicer way to display this I can actually make it even larger is this actually working yes or no interesting so that actually that was the 302 or 301 that's not alive this one's alive so yes this is a tool written by codex let me know what you think in the comments.